As migrants come across the southern border into the United States, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is putting many of them on buses straight to cities like Denver, Colorado. In fact, some 38,000 people have arrived there in the last 14 months. City officials say most of the migrants are from Venezuela, a country in political and humanitarian turmoil. The influx is straining Denver, from its hospitals to its schools to its shelters. Our correspondent, Jessica Gomez, traveled to Colorado where community groups and local business owners are now tasked with filling in the gaps the city cannot. This mama! A breakfast delivery at the Western Motor Inn, a motel north of downtown Denver, courtesy of its owner, Young Prince. They call me mama. We love you guys. Thank you, mama. I love you. But they're not paying guests. They're asylum seekers, more than 300 of them from Venezuela. Sí, exactamente. It was nearly four months ago that then stranger Christina Ascension showed up with a group of young Venezuelans. I opened my bank app and I said, this is everything I have in savings. I will give it all to you. We cannot let these families sleep outside. 72-year-old Young, an immigrant herself, invited them in. She was still mourning the loss of her son to cancer, and before that, her husband. Feel like a family here. I want to make sure they can eat. So that's a large, extra large. With help from community groups like Denver Moms for Social Justice, soon the Western Motor Inn was full. Among those here, Pedro, a former Venezuelan military officer, fleeing what he calls corruption. These, a reminder of his young daughters and wife, who he hopes will join him when and if his asylum request is granted. I really miss my family a lot. That's the most precious thing I have. There's 4,200 people in shelter right now. We've got, we've helped around 38,000 people. Since Meantime, the city of Denver at capacity, temporarily housing other migrants in government buildings and hotel rooms at a price tag of more than $40 million so far. Nonprofits stepping in to help, but resources and patients in some cases wearing thin. I understand the frustration. Denver's new mayor, Mike Johnston, now looking at trimming city budgets to make up for the shortfall. You are going to your city departments and saying, cut 10%. Is that fair to the folks in Denver? Our values are we want to be a city where you do not have women and two-year-olds out on the street sleeping in a tent in 10 degree weather. And we are also a city that doesn't want to lose the core public services that everyone wants. And those two things are in conflict. Johnston, among other mayors, recently in Washington, D.C., urging Congress to pass immigration reform, including more federal funding for cities like Denver, and asking for expedited work authorization for those already here. What breaks cities is when you have folks that come in massive numbers without work authorization and without federal dollars, and they're waiting six years for an asylum case with no chance to work in between, and they're begging us to work, and we're saying, no, no, no stay on the public dole instead. Denver immigration attorney Bryce Downer. I know that lots of local businesses here are saying that they would love to just employ these individuals outright or file petitions for these individuals. Sadly, uh, the law doesn't allow for that. Most here, he says, don't qualify for expedited temporary work permits, something former President Trump allowed for tens of thousands of Venezuelans on his last day in office. The Biden administration extending similar protections twice, but those deadlines have come and gone. The Biden administration is in a difficult position right now, so they recognize that the migrant population is straining local governments. But they're also concerned that if it becomes too quick and too easy to get a work permit, that that is only going to serve to incentivize more migrants to show up in the United States and request asylum. <laughs> At the Western Motor Inn, a break in the cold leads to a game of soccer, but another challenge for the Venezuelans in reaching their goals. The motel, in the process of being sold when they arrived, now has a closing date. They have to be out by the end of the month. Leaving volunteers like Christina scrambling to help with asylum paperwork and the search for new housing. Every day I worry about what's gonna happen to them. Pedro worries too. He's finally found work at a local mechanic shop, 
but says he won't forget the generosity here. They gave us a warm welcome over here to the hotel, and I'll always be grateful to them. <laughs> they say, we're going to miss you. I love you. In Denver, for matter of fact, I'm Jessica Gomez. Young Prince has taken in more than 500 migrants since October, spending nearly $300,000 of her own money. She's looking to purchase a new motel, and she tells us if and when that happens, she'll allow any migrants who haven't found housing to temporarily stay there.